we're supposed to know which is the right career for us? If we're to spend 40 to 50 hours a week, over 10,000 hours a year, we're going to want to choose a career that we're best at and one that we love. And with the average American changing their jobs up to seven times during their lifetime, finding the right career as soon as possible will contribute to better health and help you live a richer and fuller life. The right career is out there waiting for you, and I'm going to help you find it. I'm Freddie Cochran. Welcome to California Careers. Welcome to another edition of California Careers. I'm Freddie Cochran, your host. We're in Long Beach, California with paralegal Hillary Martin. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Freddie. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate that. Tell us, what exactly is a paralegal? A paralegal is someone who assists an attorney. Um, they can also be called a legal assistant. It's the same term, but you're doing more in-depth, comprehensive work than, let's say, maybe a legal secretary. Okay. Um, I'd say actually paralegals are the one that almost do kind of all the work and prepare the attorneys to go into court. Okay, so you guys are actually doing the substantive work yeah. as opposed to the administrative type of work. Yes. So the complaints, the discovery, the yes. motions, yes. the goodies that prepare the lawyer to, to go out and, and win a case. And, yep, exactly. Okay, um, now as a paralegal, is that that's obviously a career, but it's actually a money generator, isn't that right? Um, firms can bill out their paralegals and make money Yes. I'm a paralegal, is that right? Yes, paralegals can bill. Um, there's actually, uh, we're under Business and Professions Code 6450. Um, as long as you fall under that, you can recover those costs as well in court. Okay. So not only can you get reimbursed for attorney's fees, but you can get reimbursed for paralegal fees as well. Very cool. So yes. if a paralegal is employed, say, for a law firm like this, they can pay you guys your salary, maybe 40, 50 bucks an hour, and bill you out at maybe two or three times that and actually make money yes. from a productive paralegal. Yes, yes. Very, very cool much. stuff. <laughs> Good deal. Yes. Um, let's talk about the education that's required to become a paralegal. What, what is that? Uh, well, myself, I actually got an undergraduate degree, but that's not required. It was required by my school where I got my paralegal certificate mm -hmm. from. Um, and that can range anywhere from about a year to three years, depending on, you know, full-time, part-time, what kind of classes you're picking. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, you got a bachelor's degree. Um, what, what did you do after your bachelor's degree? After I got my bachelor's degree, I transferred to UCI to get my paralegal certificate. And I okay. actually completed that in a year. I just wanted to get it done. Wow, good deal. So yeah. UCI, I mean UC Irvine, is that yes. right? Yes, okay. UC so went Irvine. to UC Irvine, um, got a bachelor's degree from a different school? Yes, from Cal State Long Beach actually. Okay, she got a bachelor's degree and then she got a year-long paralegal certificate? Yes, and that's where I fell under 6450 to call myself a paralegal. Okay, um, do we need to, to include that code to call ourselves a paralegal or yeah, can I just... There's different ways to qualify to be a paralegal, but mm -hmm. the main one, especially in this time, is getting your cer certificate to be qualified as a paralegal under 6450. And just like attorneys, paralegals have to do continuing education. Wow. Yes. Okay. To get into the paralegal school, do we actually need a bachelor's or, or we don't? We can go from high school into paralegal school, is that right? Um, typically, they'll want either an AA or some sort of bachelor's, but it depends on the school and whether or not it's ABA approved or not. Okay. Um, mine, like I said, was ABA approved and it did require an undergraduate degree because it was a four-year university. Wow, so. very cool. Let's talk about that. What does ABA approved mean? That means the American Bar Association has basically set up certain rules that they had to obtain and so the ABA actually backs that school. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, especially in this job market, getting your paralegal certificate from an ABA approved school is very important. Okay, good deal. So um, getting into an ABA approved school and graduating from that would make a paralegal more marketable once they get out into the job force as opposed to just graduating high school, coming in and saying, you know, I'm a paralegal, I'm here to work. Very much so. You're especially educated by an ABA approved school. Yes, especially in this economy. Okay, so the tough. employers would look at that and say, wow, this person you know, is obviously knows what they're doing. They've got the education behind them and a bachelor's degree. Very cool. Yes. Um, now, tell us the difference between an ABA approved paralegal and a not ABA approved paralegal. Let's talk about the non ABA approved paralegal. Can they still go get a job? 
If yes, you don't they have can. that, it just means they went to a school that was not approved by the American Bar Association. Okay. They still have their certificate under 6450, and so they can get a job. Okay. It might just, it, it's kind of just not as sparkly. So there are paralegal schools that prepare you uh, for the jobs that are not ABA approved. Yes. And maybe their curriculum is not as rigorous as an ABA approved school. Correct. Okay. Or and their admission requirements. Yes, or they could be in the process of getting ABA approved. Okay. So we're talking about um, an ABA approved paralegal versus a non-ABA approved paralegal. The ABA approved paralegal is going to be more marketable when they go out into the job force. Yes. Um, the client is going to be more satisfied if they're seeing a bill from an ABA approved paralegal. Yes. Um, not only is that, but the employer is going to be uh, probably more well settled with a competence um, certified ABA approved paralegal. Yes, right? an employer should definitely be concerned on whether or not a paralegal has graduated from an ABA or a non-ABA approved. Okay. Um, a client probably wouldn't necessarily find that out unless um, maybe paralegal fees become an issue in the court hearing. Good point. Okay. Is there ever, do you hear of people in the legal field that have a paralegal working for their office that has no education? Is that possible? to come with maybe just a high school or maybe experience from a parent or, or, or some? There are other ways to become a paralegal. Mm -hmm. um, typically, basically before 6450 existed, mm -hmm. there was just kind of assistance. Mm -hmm. So once they started 6450, um, you had all those assistants that had been working for years and so they're what we call grandfathered in. Okay. So it would probably be someone that's worked in the field for 10 plus years. We kind of call them grandfathered in as a paralegal. They're not going to go back to school, although some of them have, okay. um, and gotten that paralegal certificate. So that's okay. another realm. But nowadays, especially if you're just now starting out, the only real way to become a paralegal is to get your certificate. Okay, good deal. You had mentioned 6450. Now that's the Business and Professions Code yes. of the state of California. Yes. Um, how is that relevant to being a par paralegal? Um, Business and profession code 6450 is basically what defines someone to be a paralegal or to not be a paralegal. Mm -hmm. So it basically sets out the qualifications of can I call myself a paralegal? Okay. So it kind of gives you the different options and if you fall under one of them, yeah, you become a paralegal. I'm curious, um, who would be enforcing that, that type of a law? Um, who, That's who a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. There is actually no, in, there's no enforcement of 6450 right now. Okay. Um, it actually took many, many years and lots of paralegals working on getting 6450 even in as mm -hmm. a law. Okay. Um, we're now working on kind of having someone regulate that and having case law to enforce it even further. So that's Interesting. another goal for us to work on, which wow. associations work on. Okay. So I was actually the president of the Orange County Paralegal Association wow. for the last two years. And so we're kind of involved and that's where that comes from. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay, good deal. Let's switch gears for a minute. Let's talk about a, a typical day as a paralegal. What are you guys doing around here? Oh boy. Um, paralegals do everything. You can start from the first initial phone call when a potential client calls in and mm -hmm. you're gathering information for the attorney to meet with them. Mm -hmm. um, so the attorney knows um, basic information before they even sit down with a client or, or this potential client. Mm -hmm. um, you're preparing retainer agreements, which is your engagement letter with that um, new client that comes in. Your mm -hmm talking to clients all the time, kind of almost interviewing them, trying to get the story, okay. um, filling out lots of paperwork, um, mm -hmm. preparing, really preparing the attorneys for their day in court. Okay. Because um, as you've seen, most family law attorneys spend almost all day in court. Mm -hmm. And so the paralegals are back here in the office doing all the work so the attorneys are prepared the next day to start all over again. Okay, so you guys are doing family law cases in here. Yes. And the paralegal's job assisting the attorneys and preparing them to go to court. Yes. Okay. So that's, you know, preparing um, paperwork, mm -hmm. dealing with experts, filing mm -hmm. the documents. It's a huge, wide realm of stuff 
stuff that paralegals can handle. Okay, and so. you guys are generally the first contact yes. that the client is talking with, so you better have some social skills <laughs> in this game, right? Yes, you probably, a okay. uh, client probably talks to the paralegals more than they will with the attorney, um, particularly because the paralegals are here in the office. Okay. And, you know, the attorney's time is precious. Good deal. So. Now, you guys are doing the substantive work, meaning that it's the actual, um, either the case law or the statutory law, the preparing of the petitions for the lawyers to go into court, the expert um, documents, the subpoenas, the actual documents that are going to be presented in court, that's generally your job. Yeah, so okay. um, in family law, we have a lot of what we call judicial counsel forms, mm -hmm. so we're preparing a lot of forms, mm -hmm. um, but we're also actually writing stories down on uh, declarations, preparing what we call points and authorities, which is the actual case law. Mm -hmm. Paralegals do research. A mm -hmm. um, lot of finance in family law, so wow. we work with a lot of numbers. Okay, good deal. Um, now, do you guys ever do any administrative type of, of of jobs, um, maybe um, I don't know um, what is it—the the transcribing, or is that the legal secretary's job? Um, it depends, honestly, on the firm and okay. the size. Family law firms okay. tend to be smaller. Mm -hmm. We have seven attorneys here, and for family law, that's actually pretty large. If you compare that to a civil litigation firm, that's very small. Okay. Um, so you can see some transcribing happening by paralegals. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe either here or at a family law, similar mm -hmm. family law firm. Okay. But that's typically more of a legal secretary's job. Okay. Um, and like the calendaring, is that, is that your, your job? The filing, those goodies, paralegal job? Well, I would say to be a successful paralegal, you should be able to do all of it. Um, okay. uh, calendaring mm -hmm. is done by numerous people in the office. Um, paralegals most definitely do it. Um, filing probably won't happen too much unless it's kind of a last minute thing. We actually have file clerks here mm -hmm. that make sure all of the cases stay in order. Okay. Um, let's talk about money for a moment. Is this a salaried position or is this generally an hourly type of position? Paralegals are not uh, are hourly employees. They are hourly. They are hourly. Okay. Um, and they're generally working for at least one lawyer. They obviously have to. Yes. Work for one lawyer. Yes. Um, do generally the paralegals get benefits and health, dental, all those goodies? Yeah, that? as long as you're a full time paralegal, then our office has all the benefits 401k, health, okay. dental, all those fun things. Good deal. Let's talk about getting started. Um, once a, a, um, a graduate from the paralegal program mm -hmm. is looking for work, how does one go about getting a job? Um, I actually started by working at the Legal Aid Society in Orange County, which I always plug for uh, potential paralegals that are coming out of the program or in the program. Mm -hmm. I started while I was in the program. Mm -hmm. um, that's also actually a great place to go for clients that can't afford attorneys. Okay. But um, obviously because they're uh, government and they don't have a lot of money, they need a ton of people working there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I started, mm -hmm. met a lot of attorneys there, which leads you to other contacts, mm -hmm. which then led me to my first job. Okay. Um, now, getting hired as a paralegal, um, was there a career services department at your school at UCI that maybe could help young people get yeah. hired as a paralegal? UCI did have one. It was great. Okay. It would notify you of any job positions that they were made aware of and okay. you actually got that for a couple of years once you were outside the program as well. Okay. Um, I'm a big firm in just contacts, getting to know as many people as you possibly can, getting involved in an association because we constantly hear about open positions Mm -hmm. And typically, if I hear about a position, I'll think of, oh my gosh, so-and-so I just met the other day would be perfect for this. Mm -hmm. And um, having your foot kind of in the door by knowing someone is mm -hmm. the best way. Okay. Um, I know uh, I worked as a paralegal in law school. Um, parts of um, looking for a job, maybe um, there are legal executive, what is it, executive headhunter? An exec yeah, we have um, legal headhunters uh -huh. that are just focused on the, the legal industry, which is a legal recruiter. Yes, whatever. Okay, exactly. Those okay. are the those are the best to use. Okay, I know. So you uh, can definitely use a 
a recruiter mm -hmm. as I knew well. Robert Half was a big one. Yeah. Robert Half Legal. There, there's a ton of them. Do you guys use them? I'm just curious. We have used some in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually ended up using one to get myself here, hmm. um, and we've used some to get temp employees okay. for paralegals, which mm -hmm. ended up you know, in a full hire, so oh, that good deal. was great. Yeah. Okay. And there's other avenues out there like the internet, obviously Craigslist or... Craigslist, Monster, even, you know, different associations usually have their own little job banks. Okay. Let's switch gears for a minute. I want to, let's talk about money. Mm -hmm. um, paralegals, now generally a good paralegal can be billed out, is that right? And can be a money generator like we had dis discussed before. Yes. Okay. Yes, um, what can a first year paralegal expect to make once they're out of school and working for a law firm? There's a lot of factors that come into place with that. You're looking at what area of law, mm -hmm. um, that's a huge factor, and then how big the firm is. Okay. So a lot of that can affect that. I would say just coming out of paralegal school, you're probably looking about 40, 50,000 a year. Okay. Depending um, on the size of firm. Now typically, um, is a paralegal, say in your firm, are they, they're billed out every day they work? I know that when I was working as a paralegal, um, you know, you'd be there for eight hours, but maybe only five or six of the hours could be billed. Does yes. that sound similar? Yeah, it's very similar to an attorney, but typically an attorney has more billable hour requirements than mm -hmm. a paralegal does. Mm -hmm. Paralegal would probably, especially in family law, run like bill four to five hours out of their eight hour day because okay. you're doing other things that might fall under legal secretary work that's really not paralegal billable. Okay. I know um, when I was taking a look at, at, my, at the bills that my boss was submitting to the clients, you know, billing oh, out yeah. at 75 or $90 an hour, I'm like, wait a second, you're only paying me 20 bucks an oh, hour, yeah. right? You should, you know, bump that sucker up, you know, <laughs> 25, 30 bucks at least. And that's probably right. pretty low. Most of the paralegals in our firm are getting billed out at at least $175 wow. dollars an hour. Wow, is that right? Very yeah. cool. Okay. Yeah, I know. Big difference. Good deal. <laughs> now, you guys provide the benefits, the health, the dental, all those goodies. Yes. 401k. and Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. Good deal. It sounds like a, a fabulous career. What do you love? Let's talk about the pros and cons of being a paralegal. What do you love about being a paralegal? Um, I always knew I didn't want to be an attorney, but I love the law. Okay. So, I think you still get that <clears throat> feeling of helping people, but, you know, without being the attorney. You don't have the 50, 60 hour work week mm -hmm. um, where, you know, that a, an attorney does. Mm -hmm. You still get to help your clients out. In family law, you really, um, every case is just so, so different. You're constantly mm -hmm. learning. And family law mm -hmm. kind of touches on every single other area that's out there. We mm -hmm. deal with bankruptcy and real estate and corporate and obviously litigation. And so family law is just very, complicated and ever-changing and mm -hmm. so it makes it so interesting right on you yeah. fascinating work you're learning you're getting paid to learn yes you're always. in such a beautiful atmosphere in this law firm yes right gosh you're helping people's lives you get to interact with people yeah i see a lot of young people in this office do you yes. do you actually make friends and, and maybe go out and outside of the office here yeah, obviously you're spending most of your life, I call office home, because you're, okay. you're here more than you're really at home. Right. So yes, your, your colleagues and coworkers become your friends. Mm -hmm. you're, you're talking and dealing with them and working with them all day long. Mm -hmm. You know what I enjoyed uh, also that I saw? Um, the substantive work, you know, getting so involved um, intellectually with your work. Mm -hmm. You look at your watch, you started at nine, it's already four or five o'clock. And the days, they go back, they, they go, go by back. just, so it fast when you're so fast. you're dealing with a fascinating case or you know a deposition of some kind. That's what yes. I loved about it. Yes, um, it is. It, the days fly by, which are nice. Obviously, yeah. you don't want them to just kind of tick by. The difference yeah. between a job and a career, right there. Yes. Okay. Always, definitely, you need to love what you're going to do. All right. Let's talk about the cons. What do you not love about this career, if if anything? Um, the biggest con would be in family law. It's very emotional. So you mm -hmm. have to be able to deal with someone that's not in their best. They're probably at their worst right now, and you have to get them through this. Mm -hmm. And you can't let yourself emotionally get attached to it, or mm -hmm. else um, it just becomes too painful for you. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the biggest con or the hardest thing is being a family law paralegal. 
okay. um, is a paralegal in general would just be learning to manage the stress. Working mm -hmm. in a law firm is stressful. Right. Even if you're not an attorney, it's still stressful. It's deadlines. Fast paced. Mm -hmm. Fast paced. Sure, deadlines. Um, yeah. I remember um, working up north on Walnut Creek and our paralegal, his name was Chris, um, you know, he would struggle sometimes with, with what to do, you know, sort of being the assistant. We're like, Chris, go get us some coffee. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sort of give him a little <laughs> on the rear yeah. end there. And, and uh, does that ever come to mind, um, being sort of like the assistant and not in charge of, of what's going on around here? Is that ever a con? Yeah, you, I mean, you really have to learn to, attorneys like to, I guess, kind of bark orders and everyone mm -hmm. thinks that their case is more important than, you know, the next attorney's case. Right. Um, as a paralegal, you really have to figure out what's most important. Mm -hmm. Be able to figure out this deadline is more important. This is what I have to finish before I go on to this. Right. So. Um, kind of check your ego that day and, and <laughs> just try to be as helpful and useful as, yes. as you can. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Productive. Mm -hmm. Good deal. We always end with a funny story of some kind. Did, did anything funny happen to you while you're working as a paralegal? Or interesting? I don't, I don't know about anything funny. I would just have to say, again, in, in family law, you hear the most interesting stories. It's okay. kind of become your own personal little soap opera. I don't have to watch soap operas anymore. Right. All I have to do is come <laughs> to work because every story kind of sounds like that. And every day you're kind of like, I've heard it all, and then you hear something and you're just shocked by it. Good deal. So it's, it's interesting. Right on. Hillary, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have it. How to become a paralegal. I want to thank Hillary Martin for joining us today here in Long Beach, California, outside the World Trade Center. This is Freddie Cochran. Take care.